Hey, how's it going? Great, good to see you. So today we're gonna to talk about uh, how to create a chi ball using our hands, how to manipulate a chi ball using our hands. This is not really dealing with energy or anything like that. It's not you know, with a chi gong. What we're talking about is just practically how to uh, construct using our hands, how to make this, um, this sensation, this, uh, you know, this form of holding this ball and sliding it around. Just the f pure physicality of it. You know, I guess uh, someone like Marcel Marceau would be a great uh, person to teach this because it's using your imagination and um, you're just learning how to kind of manipulate your hands in a certain way. Uh, we're not talking about connecting with the energy in our hands or anything like that. Although, once you kind of learn this and then when you are starting to get into your practice, you will experience that you are able to connect with uh, Lao Gong is connecting to Lao Gong and you'll start to feel, whoa, there's a sensation there. I'm feeling some kind of um, phenomenon happening. This is a very, it's a great milestone in your practice. It's just, uh, it's a good way to know that there's something real about this. There's something uh, tangible that we can experience. We can feel it with our hands. Literally, we can feel the energy in our hands. Doesn't really have much to do with uh, furthering our practice though. I think I've probably said before, when we're doing Nei Gong, when we're going, doing Qi Gong, we're really dealing with the energy that's already existing within the body. So uh, we're not pulling in the energy of the stars or of the, you know, of the flowers or the plants or anything and bringing it into our body and, you know, uh, channeling the spirit or the energy of a squirrel or of a chicken or a guinea pig or something. Um, it doesn't quite work that way. So what we're doing, uh, we can resonate with our energy. We can kind of vibe with a tree or a plant or I guess a chicken or something if you wanted to. But... Uh, we are not using the energy of a plant or the earth to, um, to move up and down in the body. We're using our own energy. That's the small universe within us. We're using that. And we're using Lao Gong to manipulate it. However, this uh, is a, where you can feel, whoa, I'm feeling something. So that's the whole energetic side of it out of the way. Now we're gonna talk just purely mechanics. How, how do we make this shape and how do we do it? I've taught this to uh, people and some people have a real easy time with it. Other people, it's excruciating. They have a very hard time with it. I shared it with my daughter the other day and within 30 seconds, she was with beach ball with a, you know, that size, she was just rolling it around, no problem. Didn't even think about it. I've uh, shown it to some people, they've t it takes them a long time to do this. And usually what I've learned is that someone that really tends to overthink things will have a hard time with this uh, because you have to let go of your thinking, just allow your body to do what it's, what it's meant to do and it'll, it'll come very easily. So let's start out. When we, uh, this is a, it's an ex excellent practice uh, it's a great practice for visually. It's like a puzzle that we're doing. Uh, we have to visualize that there's a ball in front of us and that our hands are slipping and sliding around that ball and what would that feel like. And uh, once that we do that, then we can incorporate that in so many aspects of, aspects, aspects of our Qigong and Tai Chi practice. Every, whenever we're uh, throwing the, the part in the wild horse's mane, we're always coming to the ball releasing so it's you know we're always grabbing the ball releasing the ball in different ways holding the ball manipulating the ball when we do iron shirt iron shirt involves a lot of holding the chi ball moving the ball around that aspect too so where you can see it interplayed within many many aspects of our of our daily practice and it's just a really powerful and a good good skill to learn so we're going to start out super easy. There's different ways. Uh, there's tools out there that you can use to learn it. There's something called a Tai Chi ball out there. It's literally a Tai Chi ball. It's usually made of wood. It's about this, the different sizes, but it's usually about, you know, the size of a volleyball. 
and uh, the real cheap ones are usually two pieces of wood that have been stuck together. You can get real expensive ones, which is a beautiful solid piece of wood that's been sanded down perfectly and it's gorgeous. Or you can have uh, ones that are made out of plastic, you can have ones that are made out of uh, stone, and they have them in different sizes. You could also use something like this, which is called a Tai Chi wand or a Tai Chi ruler. It's the same purpose too, where you're just, it's helping you to learn the dynamics of how to roll and manipulate with the hands. This one I got on Amazon, but this is some super duper fancy one. It actually has magnets stuck in. Uh, for whatever reason, I have no idea why they have magnets in here to, I don't know, to align the body or something. It doesn't do anything. But uh, anyway, it's just a good tool that you can use. I love to teach just no tools, just using our mind. Because I think this is the really the, the core of it. That to learn with your mind, you're, you're mani using your mind, which we should. And uh, it's a game. It's a, it's a puzzle. It's just having fun. And uh, that's part of the practice is to have fun and to explore new things. So let's start out now. So if we could imagine something about the size of a volleyball or a cantaloupe, we're going to start just using statically. If you held that volleyball, that cantaloupe with one hand, where would you hold it with the other hand? That's right. You would hold it apart from each other. Then if you shifted this hand over here, you would shift that hand there. What about here? Here. What about here? Here. So you start doing this. Lead with both hands. And just start going around statically, just as if you were taking a photo of each time. This way, they're doing it slowing it down just to even a photo level, is that you can the brain has time. If I put my hand here, where would this Lao Gong need to be to put? Where would this one need to be? It gives you time that you can reference and kind of, it slows it down that much. Obviously, if you end up doing this, that's not right. Lao Gong has got to be facing Lao Gong. And uh, I have other videos out there about how to open up Lao Gong. Lao Gong is the central point here. It's an acupuncture point that's, uh, you know, that's in the middle of the hand, but it's also, uh, when we talk about it in Qigong, Negong, it's really the whole area here. It's not so much the acupuncture point. It's really the whole area, the palace of labor. And uh, when I talk about it, about opening it up, best way to think of it is if you had an eyeball embedded in your eye, as weird as that sounds. Sorry, my dog just uh, jumped off. The other one is terrified. <laughs> okay, so if I had a uh, eyeball, hello Loki, how are you doing? Honey? That was, um, if you open the eyeball in your palm, you wouldn't use your fingers to open it up. You would use these muscles around here, right, to open the eyeball. So that's what we're talking about here in both hands. You're so nice and uh, so you open that lao gong nice and wide. Here, 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 here. Okay, so that's stage one going around, taking pictures, mental pictures of it. Once you feel comfortable going all the way around, then you start to move the hands. Then the hands start to flow around. So now you're putting all those still shots together and you're starting to move and manipulate with uh, the hands. A good way to think of this too, imagine if the ball, you had oil, baby oil poured all over the ball and your hands were just slipping and sliding around on that ball. Rather than if you were just gripping onto the ball and just kind of moving very, you know, like this, you're slipping around on the ball. Your hands are free basically of the ball just to slide around however they want. Keep it with this size too. Don't get it, don't get big yet. We get big later. So you're slipping and sliding around. So let's just kind of have fun with that as we start to slip around. If you're starting to have problems with this already, then just stop here and go back and just practice up to that point. Go back to doing this and then catch me up later. But here we are. So we're slipping and sliding around. Good. So what I'd like you to start to imagine now is if you had that ball and that ball is rolling forward. You want to move that ball so it's rolling forward. So this way it's moving away from the body. So 
So here we go, I'm rolling the ball forward. Now watch how my, on the top, that hand is always sliding over the top and then coming around. Okay, so kind of work with that. Now you're walk, going the other way now. Try it the other way. So as we're doing this, you might start to become aware of something. The front hand, the hand that's furthest away from us is just always easy. There's no problem with that. It's always this back hand. Like what the heck is this back hand meant to be doing? When it comes back, that's always like a little snag there. And I'm gonna try to show, show you how to simplify this. When the back hand comes back, see how my fingers are turning towards my core. This is not what you wanna do. Because when your fingers turn inwards towards the core, you get stuck. This, I guess, for a small one, you could pull it around, but if you had a beach ball and you're doing this, you would, there's no way you could do that. So what we do is when we're coming back, the fingers move away from the core. They move to the outside and then the hand slips under. It comes up. The hands, they're not going this way, they go this way, slipping under, then you, the whole hand slips under. So this is how we are allowing the hands to move freely around this ball. See the hand, the fingers are always slipping away from the core. Good, 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 good. Okay, so this is what we do. We just keep working with it, keep having fun. Now the best way that I like to teach this is uh, don't sit for two hours and try to bang this thing out. Do it for three or four minutes. If you start feeling frustrated or uh, just agitated, stop it and walk away. You should not, it just, this should be fun. It should be fun and amusing to you. Amusing is probably the extent of the emotions you should feel. If it's not amusing and it's starting to kind of pee you, know, pee you off, then just, you need to just drop it and go away and come back and try it again. Do short bursts, so maybe three to five minutes, at the max 10 minutes. But when you work with it for a while, get to where, you know, however far you are, and then go away, come back, and then do it again. If you're in the jacuzzi or something, do it in the jacuzzi. If you're laying in bed, do it in bed. Whatever you're doing, not if you're driving, but you know, just throughout your day, just have kind of explore with it to see how would I do this. And uh, soon enough, you're gonna get it. And it's one of those things that once you learn it, you're always shocked at like, how did that, why did that take me so long to, to figure this out? And that's just the way our, it's one of these things, that's just the way the body is. Uh, it doesn't like new things. And once it becomes familiar with that, then uh, it becomes very easy, quote unquote. It's easy for the people that can do it, right? That's always the same. So back to our physical moving of our ball. So once you have the cantaloupe size, the volleyball, then you bring it up to a basketball. You're doing the same thing with that basketball. Notice how that backhand is always kind of turning. It's that little awkward switch, we're not going this way, so we get stuck. So if you're doing, if you need to do that, then that means that you're not going the right way because your Lao Gong is no longer facing Lao Gong. So once you get your basketball, then you work into the big, the beach balls. Yes, and just have fun with that. So anyway, guys, I hope that's uh, some good information for you to practice. Let me know how it goes and I'll talk to you later. Bye.